Hi everyone, I'm Glenn Flaherty. This is Board Games and Bourbon. Thank you for being here again. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about Nova Roma, which is being published by 25th Century Games, designed by Stan Kordonsky. And this is a game that when I had heard about it and by the visuals of it being about Italy, I thought it was going to be similar to Trajan. And while I can understand why that comparison is made, really what you have is a game that is more of a subgenre of Euro game called, uh, in my words, the multi mini game kind of uh, Euro, where whatever you're doing to pick your actions has you playing out in different areas of the board and you're trying to spin all your plates at once. You'll see that in Trajan, you'll see it here in Nova Roma, you'll see it in my favorite game ever, Village, uh, Shakespeare, another fantastic game, uh, Cumbria, uh, Lorenzo maybe, but in Cumbria you'll find it, and the list goes on. Now what separates this is, now first of all Trajan is a heavier game. It's more thoughtful, and I'm not saying that in a, in a good or a bad way, but it's more... Uh, perplexing, I would say. This is less complex, but actually much more in the vein of what I want nowadays. Um, what, also, what separates this from other games I've played is a really ingenious central system here for picking your actions. So, whereas Trajan has like a Mancala where you're moving around, dropping stuff off, taking stuff up as you go, and then that's your currency to do actions around the board, or um, uh, in Shadow Kingdoms, you're uh, you have dice and you're choosing where you want to pull dice from and this unravels uh, in different ways around the board. Here, you have an XY chart and all the rows and all the columns are different actions that you can take. You could go sailing and sailing around the board is going to get you stuff and points. Uh, ultimately, there's a race to the end where if you're the first one there, you get the most points. There's a section where you can build. And when you build, you might unlock things for yourself, but also there's a majority control there. You're going to get points for having the most cubes in the building areas. There are chariot races where you want to move through and that unlocks round by round goodies that you might get and that will help you. And then you can also build your personal board over here. Uh, the port personal board gives you the opportunity to uh, plant things, to harvest things. Those resources let you do the other actions on the board. And there's also a card action. Those card actions upgrade your abilities on your personal tableau. And it's one of those games where everything's kind of tied into each other. I can't do any one thing without having little bits of resources from other areas. It's also a game where it's not as simple as taking an action and then I do the action. Doing the action simply affords me the right to take that action, but I still have to pay to do that action. I might even have to pay to even have the right to take the action. It's pretty amazing. Like, like I unlock something on my personal board. Well, I can't benefit from it unless I won the chariot race. I had to invest in the chariot race, but to do that, I had to build something and it just goes on like that. But back to that central mechanism here, what happens is when you put your worker down on the central area of the board, it's going to intersect on X and Y with two actions you can take. However, how many people are in that row or column of the action that you're about to take determines your strength at the action your power, and that will either give you discounts on taking the action or how many times you can do the action. It influences and affects how it plays out for you. So it's very dynamic. So your other opponents in the game, and again, I haven't seen this before. Tell me in the comments if you have seen this before. The other players not only can block you from taking maybe the perfect action you want, but they can also assist you and making whatever action you do end up taking more potent. I found that really super exciting. Uh, it says the game plays out in one to two hours. I can't say I ever kept track. The game's over like five rounds, um, but it moved quickly. So time really wasn't a concern. I was never uh, bogged down by decisions either like a lot of games. Um, I wouldn't say I am you know, uh, paralyzed by indecision, 
but I'm really like mathing out everything here. Here it's enough where I can, or maybe I've just gotten better with games where I can say, okay, I'm going for the specific goal. I can see how to get to that one goal that I wanna do. So I was never like bogged down. So the turns felt good. The craftsmanship, the quality of the components is wonderful. The, the board looks great. The art is by Miko Michaud. Uh, and um, <clears throat> the, the wood is nice and chunky. The cardboard is thick. The colors are rich. Really, really nice. Good decisions, thoughtful decisions. Really nice to look at. Nice to hold in your hand. The mind experience, the eye experience, and the tactile experience are all all going well here. Multiplayer versus solo plays virtually identically. Um, whether, if I'm playing multiplayer, like with my wife, the two of us are putting pieces down on this central area where we're trying to block each other. In the solo mode, I flip over a tile, essentially these are like the little AI cards, and that determines where the AI player puts their pieces. So it's it plays just like another person, which is fantastic. It plays rapidly too. It's not a brain burner. Oh man, so thankful the last few games I've had I had really good AI modes. So if you're in the mood for a mid-weight, and I'm saying literally 2.5 out of five on the BGG complexity scale, Euro game that looks good. Uh, if people have a little bit of experience with the games, everyone's gonna be able to play this really rapidly. If not, you can explain it because it's actually not that hard to to explain once you get into the flow of it. Um, the only thing you're gonna have a hiccup maybe is remembering what all the different sections did, like the building. Uh, get a worker, place it there, but you pay a wheat to play this down and you might have to explain it and not to worry because the rule book, thankfully, has a quick turn breakdown on the back that makes it really easy. So yeah, thumbs up for me. Um, if you have any questions about specifics or specific experiences that I had with the game, I'm happy to do that. But if you're looking for a new uh, Euro game, go ahead and pick it up. All right, everyone, I hope you're well. The weather is getting nice and I hope you're enjoying it. Talk to you soon.